This is the product ion scan of a two-week aged sulfapyridine and methanol water solution in which Q1 led in 215 and we had a collision energy of 15 EV and you can see right here we have a 23 so presumably the 215 uh, is a sodium adduct of some sort uh, and this line here is just a marker um, due to the software. Now one way of determining okay this is a sodium adduct is by doing a Q1 less than ion, Q3 scans, and then if you see, if you can scan down to 23, all right, you got, got a sodium adduct. Uh, another way is to do a precursor ion scan, and that's what this video is primarily about. This is the electrospray mass spectrum of a sulfapyridine in methanol solution. Uh, pretty dilute sulfapyridine and this concentration is roughly 35 nanograms per microliter. That's 35 micrograms per ml. All right, so that's uh, pretty dilute. And uh, this solution is aged roughly two weeks. And the mass spectrum of the aged solution is definitely different than the mass spectrum of the nice fresh solution from two weeks ago. And so we're going to use some MSMS and get some more information. And for this video, we're going to take a look at a precursor ion scan. All right. So we're going to ask the question, are there sodium adducts? All right. So typically a sodium adduct, if, a, if two ions are 22 apart from each other, that's usually a good indication. So this is the M plus 1 for sulfapyridine, and then this is the M plus 23, so uh, maybe this is a sodium adduct, but then also this is 22 higher, so maybe this is also a sodium adduct. Okay. And uh, so what we're going to ask the question is, is there a certain ion moiety that's part of these ions, all right? So, and that, that moiety is a sodium ion. Right? So, so what, in this situation, what we're going to do is we're going to have an ion mix, all right? And this is in the electrospray source because this is just a Q1, this is just a MS scan. And we're going to have Q1 scan from 10 to 310. And Q2 is going to be filled with a collision gas and have a certain collision energy and then Q3 is going to sit at 23 and we're going to see where the sodium adducts, what ions are sodium adducts. And as a refresher, so this is the structure of sulfapyridine. This is the electrospray spectrum from roughly two weeks ago. So we had our M plus 1, uh, M plus 23, and another one that was 22 higher. And right, now this is in a solution that had um, more water in it. Right, but uh, there definitely was no two, humongous 215. And uh, the reason that I'm interested in the sulfapyridine is that see this 184 here, all right, that is the base peak highest M over Z, well, there's also 185, but this is in the EI, this is the GC mass spec EI spectrum, all right, there is no indication of a molecular ion, uh, this is just background, GC background crud, so, uh, uh, trying to get more information about this 184 was the whole purpose for taking a look at sulfapyridine. So let's do sort of a real-time MSMS precursor ion scan. This is our solution here in a, and we're going to infuse 12.5 uh, microliters per minute, 35 nanograms per minute originally, 35 nanograms 
per microliter originally, and it's going to go into SIAX uh, API 3 plus source. Right. It's a uh, pneumatic assisted uh, electrospray. Right. And with the orifice plate not open, you can see the background in the low 10 to the minus 7 for vacuum. And since this is cryo pump, the cryo temp is uh, a little over 16 Kelvin. Pretty cold. And to start things off, so this is the scan in real time. Q1 scan is 60 to 310, 1 a.m. use death, roughly one scan, a little over one scan, a little less. Uh, it takes a little over a second for each scan. Um, and you can see it's sort of a dynamic situation. You get some fluctuation. Sometimes ions are more intense. Other times they're not. Uh, it's just the way it is. Right. So we're going to take a look at, we're going to ask the question, where are the sodium addicts? Now one of the things for a precursor ion scan is we want a lot of ions in the electrospray source because the electrospray source is going to generate all the ions that we are going to be able to look at. Q1 is going to scan then from 10 to 310 and Q2 will be the collision cell and then Q3 will sit at 23. So uh, one of the ways of getting a better mix is to increase the orifice potential for this instrument. So instead of being 60, so let's set this. We'll finish the scan. We'll start the scan again. And then now watch the change. So this is orifice 60 volts. We're going to put in 120. And voila. So what we've done is we've in, we've created a lot more low-end fragments. Okay. But uh, uh, we'll we'll see if the sodium hangs around with these lower guys. Okay. So uh, now we have an orifice. And now we're going to set up for uh, our precursor ion scan, or in this terminology for this mass spec, since it was a 20th century mass spec, it's called a parent ion scan. All right, so set up for parent ion scan in ancient terminology. All right, so Q3 is going to sit at 23 AMU. Q1 is going to scan from 10 to 310. Uh, it's going to go in one AMU steps. Each step is going to be 3.5 milliseconds. We're going to get uh, 30 scans, and since this is going to be in the MCA mode, scan MCA, scan start. Let's see what happens. Alright, so if uh, Q3 sitting at 23, and we have 23 in the mix up there, okay, it's nice to see that. Alright, and then we have, oh, look, that, that 215. That 215, that 272, uh, there's a little bit of a 294, right, which is from, uh, and then we have this uh, 308. Oh, so these are the ions that have um, uh, sodium in as part of their composition. And this is at a collision energy of 15 EVC. So let's save this data. And let's try it on some lower energy. And this is with a collision energy of 10 EV. All right. So you can see yeah, 23, at 215, 272, 308. Um, we'll try one more, say, at uh, 20 EV. So, and 
let me let's see. Okay, so it's gonna close now. So let me save the 20 EV is more energetic, but we should see hopefully the same ions. And yeah, okay, 23, 215, 272, 308. Okay, we got some of uh, 294. All right, but that's sort of that's borderline because actually I mean, we have this is all, one could say ah this is noise these little guys here. Let's save this data. And just to confirm that 215 does generate, uh, is, a, is a, a, a sodium adduct, um, let's set up a traditional product ion scan, or an old terminology, daughter ion scan. All right, so Q1 is going to let in 215, and Q3 is going to scan from 10 to 230. Uh, 1 AMU steps, 30 scans, we're going to add it up. And we'll start the scan. And you can see, alright, we are at, 50, uh, this is a collision energy 15 EV. Alright, so we still get some 215 through there. And then, alright, so these are some fragments of uh, the 215, and then one of them has the sodium. Okay, if it's a sodium, if sodium ion is in that ion with the rest of the carbon, nitrogens, oxygen, sulfur, it's nice to see that the sodium, when it gets broken down, is still there. And here we have three precursor ion scans. Q3 is, in this case, at 23. And we're scanning Q1 from 10 to 310. Right? And the, there are three different collision energies, 10, 15, 20 EV. And you can see that, uh, that two, in, all, in both, all three cases, 215, 272, and 301 are ions that have sodium associated with it. In other words, they're sodium adducts. These three are sodium adducts. And uh, the time-saving advantage, as was demonstrated, instead of having to do a MSMS product ion scan of 301 and then 272 and then 215 and all sorts of other ions that were that are in the electrospray ion source you can just set it up to do a precursor scan and you can single out what ions are of significance to you now in this example sodium was of significance of interest to me and so I was looking for what are the ions that are significant that have sodium in its construct. Uh, if you're doing drug metabolism you wouldn't be using sodium but you'd be using, you'd be interested in following some other moiety. The nice thing about sodium is that it really it doesn't gain or lose a proton the way organic substituents can.